Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. We have a level one risk for severe storms both this evening and again on Saturday. I'll walk you through the timeline for storms as we get into the holiday weekend. RDU is expecting its busiest Memorial Day weekend ever. Coming up, I'll tell you what you can do to make sure your travel is stress free. And college students from across the state gather in Raleigh, taking a stand to protect diversity, equity and inclusion policies at UNC schools. The high profile vote on DEI programs coming from the UNC Board of Governors. That is later today. We'll have more on that story and so much more on your Thursday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Chris Lovingood. Michelle, today we will not be using a thermometer to uh, measure the temperature <laughs> outside. Instead, we will see whether Elizabeth Gardner has removed her jacket on the weather patio. Let's see. Has she removed it? Ah, uh, she yet. has not. not oh. But it's coming. The other thing you can do is you can watch how big my hair gets as we get through the next few hours because it is definitely more humid than it has been the last several days. Uh, we also have that level one risk for severe storms from say Fayetteville northward. We're going to see those thunderstorms developing starting around the evening commute in our northern counties and then starting to drop southward as we head through the evening. Damaging wind, heavy rain, a possibility with this system. We'll uh, start things off right around lunchtime and then we get into the middle of the uh, afternoon and evening. We start to see those storms developing and sliding eastward and then gradually they shift southward and start to affect the triangle area between say 7 and 9 p.m. and then our eastern counties between say 10 and midnight and some of that may linger into early tomorrow morning. We'll take a closer look at that coming up. It is beautiful in the gardens out here. Yeah, it's it's warming up. We're at 72 right now in the shade. I'm comfortable in my jacket. I think in the sunshine, this would be a little bit too much. Our dew point is at 63 and that's not necessarily a low dew point or a high dew point. It's sort of middle of the road with a high of 92. Uh, that definitely feels like summer and with that hot temperature, sometimes it can feel even hotter with the heat index. I'll show you what it will feel like for us this afternoon coming up. Right, happening now in the WL Traffic Center, you can see the traffic is building on the south side of the belt line as well, on the north side of the belt line. The crashes that you see on our traffic map here really are just uh, on local roads and not affecting your commute at all. Uh, this is a crash that we've been following on uh, Lewisburg Road there on Mitchell Mill Road. It has since cleared, but you can see the heavy delays that it's still causing, or the lingering delays, I should say, it's still causing there on Lewisburg Road. I was suggesting US-1 and Capitol Boulevard, but that's backing up as well. Uh, Another crash that we've been following for the last 45 minutes. This is in the downtown area. I know many of you work in the downtown area and are headed that way. This crash happened on North Person Street in the northbound lane near Edenton Street. Not causing any problems in that particular area, but uh, just watch for some police activity as well. I want to give you a look outside. This is I-440 and Glenwood Avenue. The Beltline is part of your morning commute. This is what you're going to encounter. It's great news. Uh, traffic sm flowing smoothly in both directions at the side. That's good news. Thanks, Ken. Travelers traveling through RDU for Memorial Day arrive early. The airport says it's expecting its busiest holiday travel season ever. And WRL's Nick Perlin is at the airport this morning. Nick, we're already seeing some long lines at the airport there. That's right, and as you just said, we can expect this to get even busier as Memorial Day weekend really kicks into high gear um, uh, from Friday all the way through Tuesday. Now, RDU did say that they are working with TSA and the airlines to make sure that they can uh, have the staffing to handle the surge of travelers we're expected to see this Memorial Day weekend. But to make sure your travel is as stress-free as possible, RDU recommends you check the status of your flight before you arrive, and if you plan on parking, they say you should reserve parking 24 hours before your flight. And of course, arriving two hours before your flight is set to depart is so important in case there's any last minute changes to your flight. Uh, again, WRAL will continue to monitor if there's any major delays at RDU this weekend. Reporting live at RDU, Nick Perlin, WRAL News. All right, thank you, Nick. Let's say you're not flying, you're driving instead. Well, let's look at the gas averages from AAA this morning. The nationwide average is now 361. That is down more than six cents from a month ago. In North Carolina, the average cost is $3.36. And in Raleigh, the average is at $3.43. <laughs> Today, diversity, equity, and inclusion policies at all schools in the UNC system are likely to be repealed. UNC's Board of Governors will make that vote. And as Kelsey Coffey explains, students plan to show their support for the program. 
We're expecting to see dozens of students here in downtown Raleigh to express their concerns later this morning. Today's vote comes after state lawmakers debated over diversity, equity and inclusion policies for weeks. Democratic leaders held a news conference yesterday. They argue DEI has made students from an increasingly diverse North Carolina feel welcome. If the policy change goes through, not only would DEI goals and initiatives be removed, several DEI-related job positions would be changed or eliminated. Democrats say repealing these policies could drive new businesses away from our state. I talked to legislators in Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Georgia. They're telling me, you keep going this way, we're, we're already going after your, your future industry. Republicans say repealing these policies is the right move. They say that it would save the state millions of dollars in funding. So we'll be sure to stay on top of what comes out of that final decision later today. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Raleigh. And WRL was there for the aftermath of a building that caught fire on Parkland Road. You're looking at video now from the WRL breaking news tracker just before four o'clock this morning. Firefighters say they managed to get the flames out within about 10 minutes. You can see them spraying there and the smoke billowing. Now, we're told it was an abandoned garage where this happened, but investigators have not said if anyone was inside when the fire started, but they also reported no injuries. <laughs> A bicyclist is recovering in the hospital this morning because authorities say a car hit him in Johnston County. This happened on West Market Street in Smithfield around 3 o'clock this morning. Investigators say the bicyclist was taken to the hospital, but it's unclear how severe his injuries are. They also say the driver is cooperating. WREL is working to confirm more details, including whether the cyclist was wearing a reflective vest. And Durham police are trying to determine if two drive-by shootings that injured three juveniles are connected. Police were called to Ash Street around 7.30 last night. Authorities say they found two juveniles suffering from gunshot wounds they received from a passing car. Both were taken to the hospital and are expected to recover. And an hour before that, officers were called to Morning Glory Avenue. Another person under 18 said that he was walking on the street when someone shot at him from a car. He went to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Today, late Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi is being laid to rest. Thousands of people marched this morning to show their respects for Raisi. This was the final ceremony before he will be buried in his hometown. Massive crowds have gathered for funeral processions over the past few days. Raisi is in his former minister, as well as several others died in a helicopter crash on Sunday. And we're working to learn the name of a man who drowned in the Noose River in Raleigh. A recovery team found his body last night around 7 o'clock. They spent about six hours trying to find him. Witnesses say the man was on the Noose River trail with his family when he went for a swim and he didn't resurface. In the next few weeks, NC State will release the latest testing results from Poe Hall. The university closed the building more than six months ago, and that's because initial testing found toxic levels of PCBs. Now, since then, only WREL's Five on Your Side has interviewed more than 200 alumni and workers. These are people who say they got sick after spending time in the building. Records show the university delayed or denied outside help from the CDC, the state health department, and the EPA to test the building. In an exclusive interview with Five on Your Side's Keely Arthur, Chancellor Randy Woodson said that he will only comment on health concerns after testing is done. In order to be able to fully engage with people about health implications, we have to have questions answered about the environment within the building. In the update released yesterday, NC State said that the CDC is handling the investigation into health concerns. Cameras were rolling as a garbage truck burst into flames in Raleigh. Take a look. A WRL viewer sent us this video of the incident that happened on Spring Forest Road at Hargrove Road. That's not far from Capitol Boulevard. We're told that this garbage truck is fueled by natural gas, likely why that truck was engulfed in flames so quickly. The fire also spread to the nearby tree line. Well, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Like, it was just insane how the, like I said, the, it melted right off. It, I, I had no idea something like that could happen. Incredible sight. Fortunately, the driver of the truck is okay and no one else was hurt either. Frustrated ticket buyers could find the experience less stressful soon. Hear more on the Justice Department getting tough on the company that owns Ticketmaster. Plus, some college athletes could get paid for the time they spent playing before NIL deals entered the picture. 
the potential settlement for student athletes, plus guarantees for future generations. And today we kick off our weather pattern, which features afternoon and evening thunderstorms. We have a level one risk for severe storms today and again on Saturday. I'll walk you through the timeline for storms this weekend coming up. Welcome back on your Thursday morning. How about this for a view? You're looking live at Carolina Beach. It is going to be a very nice beach day, but make sure you get out there early because we do have the potential for some storms later on today. It's going to be a hot one. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner on the WRL weather patio. Elizabeth, beautiful Azalea Gardens. Uh, we could see some rain later on today, though. Yes, and, you know, we've done pretty well with rain for the month of May, but, you know, you always want to keep it going so you don't get into any situations with, uh, with drought. When we take a live look at the gardens right now. It is so pretty out here in the sunshine. It's starting to warm up, but I'm in a shady spot here on the patio, and it feels very comfortable. Our temperatures, as you're uh, headed out, are going to be mostly in the low 70s for now, but climbing into the low 90s this afternoon. We watch our next system rolling through. You can see that stationary front that's on the other side of the mountains and uh, stretch across the Mississippi Valley. It has produced some showers and thunderstorms, and we will continue to see it doing that for us here over the weekend, starting today, but continuing on Friday, as well as Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We'll have afternoon and evening storms, and that does not mean it's going to be a washout for the holiday weekend. Afternoon and evening thunderstorms mean just that, and sometimes we may not even see the storms until 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the evening. So you should have some good time during the day to get outside and enjoy your holiday before those storms begin. 89 on Friday, 86 Saturday. Saturday 89 on Sunday, but it's also going to be on the muggy side, so it will feel more like low 90s with the heat index. There's that level one risk for today. We're looking at from Fayetteville northward, the potential for some damaging winds or heavy rain, but the timeline for this is pretty late in the day. We check out Futurecast. These storms begin to develop up near the Virginia line near the evening commute. There's five o'clock, and then as we head through the afternoon or and evening between seven and nine, that's moving into the triangle, and then from midnight on, we see some of that in our southern counties. Now, Friday morning we could actually see a few stray showers. There's 6 a.m. and we push it ahead closer to lunchtime and you can see that we have that chance for some isolated showers. That's likely to be the only morning over the weekend that we see rain to start with. So just keep that in mind. We should have some time during the day to enjoy uh, our pretty weather. This is 5 p.m. Saturday, and you, er, excuse me, Friday, and you can see the showers and thunderstorms don't start cropping back up again until the evening, until after sunset. There's Saturday morning at 8 o'clock and as we move through the day Saturday, those showers and storms start to develop early to mid afternoon. A lot of those will be um, in our eastern counties and then sliding eastward toward the coast. Our severe weather threat Saturday, though, is a level one risk. So uh, that's one of the days you'll need to just watch out for. So looking at anywhere from a 30 to 60 percent chance of rain each afternoon and evening all the way through the holiday Monday and the amount of rain about an inch to an inch and a half total for the whole weekend. Now that could vary depending on whether or not you see one of the thunderstorms coming through. We're looking at 92 today and 91 on Sunday. I'll show you what it will feel like with the heat index through our holiday weekend coming up in just a little while. All right, Elizabeth, here in the WRL Traffic Center, all the crashes you see on our traffic map here on local roads, not really affecting any of the major thoroughfares, but also this time of the morning, we expect the Beltline to be very busy, and we're seeing that this morning on the south side of the Beltline there around Lake Wheeler Road, the Gorman Street exit, also the northbound side, you know, those lanes coming off of uh, 87 and those southbound lanes onto the westbound lanes of 440. You can see those the brake tapping going on as well. And the good news about 87 in the southbound lanes, well, it's free and clear this morning. Not so, though, on not I-40, at 540 in those westbound lanes, you can see a lot of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic going on. Uh, this crash that we've been monitoring here on Lewisburg Road and uh, Mitchell Mill Road has cleared in the last half hour, but you can still see the lingering delays there on Lewisburg Road in those southbound lanes. And, of course, a lot of people were taking Capitol Boulevard US-1 as an alternate route, and you can see that's beginning to back up as well. Another accident that just cleared as well uh, in the downtown area on Martin Street. Nothing to worry about there. Uh, so if you're heading into the downtown area, you're all set. I-440 and Glenwood Avenue, if you're getting ready to head out and that's part of your morning commute, good news. It's flowing smoothly in both directions here. A uh, little bit of, uh, I don't even want to call this congestion, just slow going on I-40 and Airport Boulevard. Uh, particularly if you're heading for, uh, to the airport for a flight, the traffic is moving, so you will get to the airport on time. 
Ken, thank you. People across Iowa are cleaning up after deadly tornado struck Tuesday. Authorities say five people died and at least 35 others were hurt when a tornado hit the small town of Greenfield. Look at this debris, the damage done to that town on your screen. They also say the number of people hurt could likely go higher. The latest number reflects only those that have been treated for injuries and at least 18 tornadoes were reported in Iowa on Tuesday. A Fort Liberty soldier is charged with the murder of his eight-month-old daughter. Gabriel Seville's charges are coming more than a year after his daughter's death. An autopsy of his eight-month-old daughter, Misty De La Torre, found that she suffered damage to her eyes, her spine, her head and neck. A prosecutor at yesterday's preliminary hearing said that the baby had so many wounds they couldn't be counted. Court records show that Seville won joint custody of the baby just days before her death. Mm, the poor child. Friends and families will remember a Franklinton teenager with a balloon release on what would have been his 18th birthday. Jackson Williams was 17 years old when he was killed last August. 25 year old Matthew Harris is charged with first degree murder in the case. Today would have been his 18th birthday. Today's gathering will be at 5 o'clock in the Wake Forest Cemetery by his grave. Dramatic video from California shows the moment SWAT officers took a man into custody. He's accused of killing a UPS driver. Officers and armored police trucks surrounded Rianne Fontenose's pickup truck. They broke the windows and used what appeared to be tear gas before pulling him from that truck. Fontanosa is the co-worker of UPS driver Expedito de Leon. He was shot and killed on the job last week. Investigators say that Fontanosa got into a work computer and learned that de Leon's route before shooting him. They're still trying to figure out a motive. Aviation investigators are trying to determine why a plane took a sudden dive during severe turbulence, hurting dozens of people and leaving at least one passenger dead. Singapore Airlines says the jet dropped about 6,000 feet in three minutes. This was during a flight from London to Singapore. A 73-year-old British man died of a suspected heart attack, according to authorities, and about 20 people who were on the plane are still in the hospital in Bangkok. That's where the plane made an emergency landing. The University of California, Los Angeles, made a change in police leadership weeks after campus protests turned violent. UCLA Police Chief John Thomas has been reassigned. That's according to a statement from the university. The university did not say if the move is permanent on April 30th. Law enforcement stood by for hours as counter protesters attacked a pro-Palestinian encampment. A criminal investigation into the incident is happening now. Jeff Hogan in the WRL Live Center. Got some brand new information coming in from Nash County Sheriff Keith Stone. I want to show you this map right here. This took place in Spring Hope here off of North Big Woods Road. It's just north of U.S. Highway 64. I'm going to push into this area because officers were called there. Deputies from Nash County Sheriff's Office went there. Uh, an officer shot his weapon, so he was involved in a shooting with a person who had a gun. There are not many details about this. We do have a crew on the way, but Spring Hope Police also responded to this. The deputy is fine. Uh, the other person who allegedly had the gun is also fine in that, and we'll get more details of this into the WRA Live Center. I'll bring them to you. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Federal regulators are taking steps toward requiring disclaimers for the use of artificial intelligence in political ads. The FCC chairwoman is calling for regulation. It wouldn't ban using AI in ads. It would only require ads to disclose the technology that was used. This would apply to TV and radio ads. The FCC has no jurisdiction over the Internet. Buy now, pay later lenders will need to offer customers more protections. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau says the lenders will be regulated the same way as credit card providers. The change is happening because of numerous complaints from people. These are people who said they were having difficulty getting refunds or canceling loans, and they claim this has damaged their credit scores. The lenders will now be required to pause payments when a person disputes a charge. They'll also need to give refunds or returns of canceled services and provide billing statements. The new rules are expected to go into effect sometime after August 1st. The way you buy tickets to concerts could change in the future. The Justice Department and several states are expected to file an antitrust suit as soon as today against Ticketmaster's parent company, Live Nation. The lawsuit alleges that antitrust violations in part due to the market dominance 
of the company's Ticketmaster unit. You may remember the industry came under fire after glitches blocked millions from getting tickets to Taylor Swift's Eras Tour in 2022. Critics say that shed light on how a lack of competition has led to poor customer service, confusing pricing and expensive fees. We are working to learn whether North Carolina will be a part of this lawsuit. The Atlantic Coast Conference voted to accept a multi-billion dollar settlement from the NCAA. This would pay student athletes. Other collegiate athlete leaders will need to respond today. The proposed settlement would pay former student athletes who didn't benefit from name, image and likeness or NIL since 2016. It also includes a new revenue sharing system. This will require schools to commit $20 million per year for 10 years to pay student athletes directly. A man hired to watch children is facing charges for abusing his position. Just ahead, the reaction from parents after a YMCA employee is accused of secret peeping on kids. And students in Raleigh call on UNC leaders to protect diversity, equity and inclusion programs. More on the vote to end DEI policies at UNC System Schools. Are tuned to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. It is nice now, but it's going to get hot today. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner, she is outside on the weather patio, Elizabeth. We're also expecting some storms. It is still comfortable out here right now, but that heat is going to help to add enough energy to the atmosphere later on that we could see some isolated storms that could produce some wind damage or some heavy rain. And those storms will come much later today through the Triangle area as late as 7 to 9, but in our northern counties as early as around 4 to 5 o'clock is when they'll likely begin. We may continue to see some of those overnight and into early tomorrow morning. Right now, temperatures are in the low 70s as you're stepping out the door. At Durham Bulls again, beautiful there at the DBAP. Um, they do have a homestand that runs all the way through the weekend. A hot afternoon. If you're walking the dog right after work, it's still going to be in the mid 80s. We'll see highs in the low 90s. All right, Elizabeth, all new into the WRL Traffic Center. We just got reports of a crash involving a bus on South New Hope Road in the westbound lane near Rock Quarry Road. We're working to get some more information about it, especially if it's involved, since it involves a bus. As soon as we get any new information, we'll let you know. But we're not seeing any major delays in that area, but just look for some police activity as well. Elsewhere around the Triangle, we see the busy morning that's building on the north side of the Beltline, as well as the south side of the Beltline. And and 540 as well. Thanks, Ken. Today, college students from around the state will rally in Raleigh ahead of the UNC Board of Governors vote to repeal DEI mandates at all university schools. Students say repealing DEI would negatively impact the educational experience. A press conference is scheduled for 830 this morning. Next on Fox 50, Memorial Day travel is expected to be the highest in almost 20 years. And next on today, Chris Pratt is live in Studio 1A. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. And we do have the potential for some severe storms this afternoon and again Saturday, plus the potential for thunderstorms each afternoon this holiday weekend. I'll walk you through the timeline. And we're getting you a live look at RDU this morning. You may be one of the millions of Americans that are getting ready to travel through there this weekend. And we're going to take you for a look at how busy Memorial Day week is going to be for us this weekend. The first in 14 years, in fact, according to the FAA and from AAA. Watch that very yeah. carefully this morning. Here on WRL News and Fox 50, I'm Chris Lovingood. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. It's Thursday. It's almost Friday, which means it'll be the holiday weekend. A lot mm -hmm. of people are going to be traveling. So uh, we'll get to Nick Perlin. He's at RDU for us this morning. But first, we have to get out to meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner. She is on the WRL <laughs> weather patio uh, showing us some storms that we could see later on today. So we've been talking the last several days about the fact that we are going to see afternoon and evening thunderstorms every afternoon starting today all the way through the holiday. This is a look at our severe weather threat for today from Fayetteville northward. We have the chance for damaging winds or heavy rain. It's likely to happen fairly late today, though, starting at around, uh, say, 5 o'clock in our northern counties and then gradually sliding southward. We can walk through it right now with Futurecast. It will become partly cloudy this afternoon. It's beautiful out here right now. But some thunderstorms developing between 3 and 5 in our northern counties 
counties and between seven and nine around the triangle and then eventually that uh, slides farther south. That gives us a good chunk of the day today with the dry conditions and that's what we'll see every day this weekend. We're going to have plenty of time during the day to get outside and enjoy the weekend festivities. Uh, but then of course we're looking at uh, the chance for some afternoon and evening storms. The gardens looking beautiful this morning. 72 is our current temperature with a dew point of 63 and that dew point isn't too bad uh, during the, the heat of the summer. We tend to see that dew point about 10 degrees higher and it really feels miserable. It's pretty comfortable out here right now. We will see a high of 92. I'll show you what the heat index will feel like through the holiday coming up. And happening now in the WR Traffic Center, we got reports just in the last 30 minutes of a crash involving a bus on South New Hope Road in the westbound lane near Rock Quarry Road. Uh, we're, of course, working to get more information about it, especially since it involves a bus. Right now, we're not seeing any major delays in the area, but if you have to navigate uh, South New Hope Road in that intersection, just watch for some police activity in that area as well. As soon as we get any new information, we'll let you know about it. Uh, we've got some other crashes we want to bring your attention to as well. This one happened on Jones Sausage Road in the eastbound lane near I-40 westbound. This is on Jones Sausage Road proper, so it's not really affecting any traffic there. It's probably off to the side of the road and not affecting your ability to get onto the Beltline as well. I did notice some brake tapping going on in that area. Probably people looking to see exactly what's going on. This crash on Avon Ferry Road, not far from the station, as a matter of fact, on Champion Court near NC State, not causing any major delays in that area. Just, just keep that in mind as you're getting ready to head out. Of course, you can always listen to us on WR News Plus on the radio. All right, thank you, Ken. Breaking news this morning. In the past 30 minutes, we have learned that a man armed with a weapon has been shot by Nash County deputies. This happened along Big Woods Drive in Spring Hope. The deputy was not injured. We are working to learn the condition of the person who was shot and what led up to the shooting. Sky 5 and a crew is on the way to that scene right now. And today, diversity, equity, and inclusion policies at all UNC school systems are set to be repealed. The UNC Board of Governors will make its final vote. And as WREL's Kelsey Coffey explains, students are gathering now to voice their support for the policies. We're expecting to see dozens of students here in downtown Raleigh to express their concerns later this morning. Today's vote comes after state lawmakers debated over diversity, equity, and inclusion policies for weeks. Democratic leaders held a news conference yesterday. They argue DEI has made students from an increasingly diverse North Carolina feel welcome. If the policy change goes through, not only would DEI goals and initiatives be removed, several DEI-related job positions would be changed or eliminated. Democrats say repealing these policies could drive new businesses away from our state. I talked to legislators in Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Georgia. They're telling me, you keep going this way, we're, we're already going after your, your future industry. Republicans say repealing these policies is the right move. They say that it would save the state millions of dollars in funding. So we'll be sure to stay on top of what comes out of that final decision later today. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Raleigh. Travelers, you might want to give yourself extra time before arriving to RDU this Memorial Day holiday weekend. The airport says it's expecting its busiest holiday travel season ever. And WRL's Nick Perlin was there and he says he saw some long lines already. RDU says they're expecting approximately 300,000 travelers to fly through the airport this holiday weekend, making this the busiest Memorial Day weekend the airport has ever seen. Now, RDU says they are working with TSA and the airlines to make sure they have the staffing to handle this large amount of travelers, but to make sure your travel goes as smoothly as possible, RDU recommends you check the status of your flight before you arrive at the airport. They also say if you plan on parking, reserve that parking spot 24 hours before your Everyone flight and of course loading, arriving two hours only. before your flight is set to depart in case there's any last minute changes to your flight. At RDU, Nick Perlin, WRL News. And we've also got you covered on gas prices. If you're traveling by car this Memorial Day, AAA puts the nationwide average at 361 a gallon. That's down more than six cents from a month ago. And in North Carolina, the average price for a gallon of gas is 336. In Raleigh, the average is down one cent. It is now at 343 a gallon. WRL is trying to confirm the cause of a building fire on Parkland Road in Raleigh. You're looking at video on your screen from the WRL breaking news tracker just before 4 o'clock this morning. 
fire crews were able to get the situation under control in about 10 minutes. And we're told that it was an abandoned garage, but it's quite unclear if anyone was inside when the fire started. Authorities say a bicyclist is in the hospital because a car hit him in Smithfield in Johnston County. You're looking at video from West Market Street shortly after 3 o'clock this morning. You can see that car with its hazard lights on. We're told the bicyclist was taken to the hospital, but it's unclear how severe his injuries are. Authorities say the car driver is cooperating. WRL is working to learn if the bicyclist was wearing a reflective vest or any lights. And today, city leaders in Durham will get a presentation on crime data from the first quarter of this year. Numbers from Durham PD show that there were six homicides between January and March. That is down from 14 during the same time last year. There were 40 rapes. That was down from 50 last year. And aggravated assaults are up from 272 in 2023 to 287 this year. City Council will discuss the numbers with Police Chief Patrice Andrews during a work session at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Durham police are investigating whether two drive-by shootings that injured three juveniles are connected. Police were called to Ash Street at about 7.30 last night. Officers say they found two juveniles who were shot by someone in a passing car. Both minors were taken to the hospital and are expected to recover. And just about an hour before that, officers were called to Morning Glory Avenue. A young person said he was walking on the street when someone shot at him, also from a car. He went to the hospital and is expected to recover. A man responsible for taking care of young children is now charged with secret peeping at an elementary school. Raleigh police arrested 22-year-old Kajan Haywood yesterday. He was a YMCA employee working after school programs at Wiley Elementary School. The school's principal says the reported peeping happened last month. Court documents show that one minor was among the victims. Parents of kids at Wiley Elementary say this worries them. My main concern is um, who they're going to be interacting with. Um, who are they really interacting with? That's all he done. Is this the first time that this has happened? Has it happened before? And he's never got caught. The YMCA says it has fired Haywood and is cooperating with Raleigh Police in their investigation. WREL is working to learn the name of the person who drowned in the Noose River in Raleigh. Crews recovered his body last night around 7 at, after a six-hour search. Witnesses say the man was on the Noose River Trail with his family when he went for a swim and did not resurface. Today, Live Nation, the owner of Ticketmaster, is expected to face an antitrust lawsuit from the Justice Department. It could lead to changes in how you buy tickets in the future. The lawsuit alleges that antitrust violations because of Ticketmaster's dominance in the business. The industry came under intense criticism because of glitches that prevented millions of people from getting tickets to Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Critics say that revealed how a lack of competition caused poor customer service, confusing pricing, and expensive fees. WRL reached out to the state attorney general's office to learn if our state is part of this lawsuit. Lawmakers in the state house have voted against a ban on masking up in public. It previously passed in the Senate. The House decision was quick yesterday and had bipartisan support. Opponents of the bill argued those with weakened immune systems would be at risk under a universal mask ban without exceptions. A funeral service will happen today for Raleigh philanthropist Asad Maimandi. The service is set for 2 o'clock this afternoon at Christ Episcopal Church on East Edenton Street. He died on May 10th, one day shy of his 90th birthday. His name appears on the Maimandi Concert Hall in Raleigh that serves the North Carolina Symphony. Well, there are some new athletic girls in the Barbies world. Why Venus Williams hopes the newest Barbie doll can inspire young girls interested in sports. Plus, Apple Music is settling the debate on the best albums of all time, including the artists that top the list. Well, this is a nice image looking live at Wilson this morning at Whirly Gig Park. You see them spinning over there on this beautiful Thursday morning as you're waking up. Things may turn a little different during this weekend as you prepare for the Memorial Day weekend. We've got meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner tracking that for you out there on the weather garden uh, to kind of show you the weather patio. See, I'm just I'm throwing weather in all the things right now. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, no, it, it all works, Chris, because I'm in the WRL Azalea Gardens on the weather patio, so you got the bases all covered. We've been following this front for the last several days, and it is sliding a little closer to us. So today's the first day that we're going to get into that wet pattern that we'll see over the weekend. Some isolated thunderstorms will start to develop mid to late afternoon in our northern counties, and then that will start to drift southward. There's 5 o'clock with some showers and storms just to the north of the triangle, and then those showers and storms drift into the triangle around dinner time between 7 and 9 and then off to the south and east later on this evening. We will likely wake up to a few isolated showers on Friday morning and then have a chance of afternoon and evening storms Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. Today we do have that level one risk for severe storms, damaging wind and the potential for some heavy rain possible. But again, that's going to be evening and the timing on that is going to be very similar each day. Of course, big holiday weekend. None of these days are going to be a washout. So each day it'll be late afternoon afternoon into the evening, so you should have a good amount of time during the day to get outside and enjoy. We take a live look here at the gardens. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, we've got so many folks out here working hard this morning to make these gardens look beautiful. They're mowing the grass and uh, get it all looking pretty out here. 72 is our current temperature. We have a southwest wind at nine miles per hour, and that's helping to bring the warmth and humidity in. When I came in this morning, that moon was absolutely gorgeous hanging over the building. So I want to give a big thanks to uh, Cindy Manning from Nash County who sent us this beautiful picture of the moon. I, I, I need to learn how to take one that looks like that. It was full this morning, but you'll still be able to see it most likely for the next several mornings still looking nice and big. Go to WRL.com and search weather watchers. Send us your photos. We want to see what's happening in your backyard. Oh, it's going to be a hot one. 92 in the Triangle for today. 91 in Durham, 92 in Fayetteville. Our humidity is sitting right now at 63. Dew point sitting at 63, which puts us in the tolerable zone. So we're not going to see our humidity really uh, cranking up too much today, not as much as it could. So 94 is what it will feel like compared to the high of 92, but it will feel like mid to upper 90s as we get through the holiday weekend. So it's going to feel nice to be at the pool, but just remember um, once those thunderstorms start, you got to get out of and away from the water. Earlier in April, we saw a tropical outlook with a 10% chance of development. This is the first one in May. Of course, we're getting close to the start of the season on June 1st, uh, but we'll be watching that area down there in the Caribbean as uh, uh, the weather the, as the hurricane center has uh, identified it now. So it is going to be hot and humid through the holiday weekend with afternoon and evening storms, but still there should be some time during the day to get outside and enjoy. Back to you. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. Cleanup will continue today in Texas after severe storms moved through that area, spawning several tornadoes. This is video from a mall in Temple where strong winds shattered windows there. Temple is about an hour outside of Austin, and there are reports of downed power lines and downed trees as well. City officials have asked people to stay home if they can, as road conditions are either dangerous, closed, or impassable. So far, no deaths have been reported. New this morning, at least nine people were killed when strong winds toppled a stage at a campaign rally in Mexico. Video shows the moments right before this collapse. Presidential candidate Jorge Alvarez Minez and his team can be seen running for cover as the structure collapsed there. Mm. At least 50 people were injured as well. Rescuers are working to save people trapped beneath that stage. Families of the victims of the Uvalde school shooting have reached a settlement with the city. It comes days before the school, the second anniversary of the mass killing at Robb Elementary School that left 19 students and two teachers dead. 19 families of the victims have reached a $2 million settlement with the city. In addition to the settlement, the city pledged to roll out changes to the police force, including a new fitness for duty standard. Towns on our coast are practicing surf rescue training ahead of the holiday weekend. Lifeguards and fire crews from Emerald Island and Indian Beach spent Wednesday training for an emergency. This is a way for them to improve communication skills and to take action in case other crews are busy. The fire chief says training includes different obstacles they would need to overcome if there was an emergency, such as someone drowning. Calling mutual aid for a jet ski response from Indian Beach. Uh, Indian Beach is able to work with our lifeguards um, and communicate with them in the water, um, various techniques, pickup, and skills. And so it just makes it that much fluider, that much of a faster response, and also safer for both the victim and the operators from uh, emergency services. Even during the off season, fire crews say they find ways to improve beach safety for all visitors. 
For the first time, a study finds more people are consuming marijuana on a daily basis compared to alcohol in the U.S. According to the data, 40 percent of cannabis users report daily or almost daily use. That's roughly 18 million people compared to 14 million who drank alcohol as often. The study does say that alcohol is still used more widely in general, though. Kansas City Chiefs players and the coaches are defending Harrison Butker's character while saying they don't necessarily agree with what he said. He's facing criticism after his commencement speech at a Catholic university in Kansas that included anti-LGBTQ and anti-feminist comments. Chiefs quarterback Patrick Holmes and coach Andy Reid were both asked about it during a media session yesterday. And he's trying to do whatever he can to, to lead people in the right direction. And that might, might, might not be the same values as I have, but at the same time, I'm going to judge him by the, the character that he shows every single day. Uh, we all get along. We all respect each other's, um, you know, opinions. And not necessarily do we, do we go by those, but we, you know, we respect everybody to have a voice. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell was also asked about Butker's comments yesterday. He said the NFL's players have a diversity of opinions, and that's something they treasure. Toronto will receive the WNBA's first franchise outside the United States. The yet-to-be-named team will play in 2026. Larry Tannenbaum, owner of Sports Ventures, will own this team. He's also a minority owner of the group that owns the Toronto Raptors and the Maple Leafs. This new WNBA Toronto team will play at Coca-Cola Coliseum at Exhibition Place in Toronto with occasional games played at Scotiabank Arena. There are some new Barbies in town, and they are at the top of their game. Mattel will be honoring nine of the biggest athletes around the world with a doll made in their likeness. One of the athletes being immortalized is tennis icon Venus Williams. The company hopes the dolls will show how sports can improve self-confidence and empower the younger generation. I literally can't imagine my life without sports and without the game. So I want other young girls to have that invaluable experience of playing a sport and what it teaches you and what you learn and what you take from it, not just that moment for the rest of your life. I love that. Some of the other athletes being honored include Canadian soccer player Christine Sinclair and Mexican gymnast Alexa Moreno. A Netflix series prequel is hitting the stage. A country music staple is launching his own Sirius XM channel and so much more. Here's Ashley Dvorkin. Let's get started. Gyllenhaal's thriller, Stapleton Station, and the upside down on stage in the Hollywood Nation. This is going to be a fresh start. An official trailer has debuted for the world premiere production of Stranger Things, The First Shadow. The West End show also announced it's extending its run into 2025 due to high demand. The stage show is a prequel to the hit Netflix series. I ain't got no kind of plan. Ten-time Grammy-winning singer-songwriter Chris Stapleton is launching an exclusive Sirius XM channel Thursday. The 24-7 station is curated and presented by Stapleton and his band, The Honchos. Tunes will span Stapleton's career and musical influences. Camden. In Today's First Looks is a musical story set in Camden. The Hulu original series produced by Dua Lipa brings untold stories of how lives and careers of iconic artists were influenced by that area of London. It premieres May 29th. My suspect. Because I did not kill her. Apple TV Plus revealed a look at Jake Gyllenhaal's book-to-screen thriller, Presumed Innocent. Gyllenhaal leads and executive produced the eight-part limited series along with David E. Kelly and J.J. Abrams. The story is about a murder which upends the Chicago prosecuting attorney's office when one of its own is a suspect. Co-stars include Ruth Nega, Bill Camp, and Peter Sarsgaard. The series premieres June 12th. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. That was actually Dvorkin reporting. A lot more books being made Ooh. into series, into I've been noticing yeah. lately. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, well, a new list from Apple Music is settling the debate on the best albums of all time. The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill takes the top spot for Apple Music's Best 100 list. Michael Jackson's Thriller is number two, and The Beatles' Abbey Road is number three. Other artists who made the album include Prince, Stevie Wonder, Amy Winehouse and Beyonce, who was the only female artist to make that list twice. All right, we got to show you this quick. A WRL viewer has caught the thief who is emptying out their bird feeder every night. Stephen Rowe sent us this video of a deer raiding the feeder. He says he was wondering why it was empty every morning. Well, this is why. Right. <laughs> News, weather, and traffic coming up in just a bit.